Heavenly Father, thank you for these people, for this church family, for their prayers, their efforts, and their humble service. Thank you for the many Christians that prayed and served here over the last 150 years. Help us to see how you guided and provided and inspire us to love you more. As we see your sovereign hand in starting and sustaining this local church, may we joyfully celebrate your faithfulness to us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Let's begin our story in the year 1836. During that year, Frontiersman Davy Crockett fought and died at the Battle of the Alamo. Charles Darwin returned from a five-year voyage spent collecting specimens used to support his theory of evolution, and President Andrew Jackson led an expanding United States, which already included Indiana. 1836 was also the year that 100 settlers in the southwest region of Elkhart County established Olive Township. Meanwhile, circuit-riding preachers traveled the countryside, sharing the gospel with settlers in log homes. Eventually, they gathered enough believers to form what became known as the Eel River Christian Conference. The conference held its first meeting in 1844 in a barn on the banks of the Eel River, just 30 miles from Olive Township. Over the next 20 years, Olive Township experienced significant population growth, and in 1852, a new village named Salem was established. The village name would later be changed to Wakarusa, an Indian word that supposedly meant knee-deep in mud. During the early years of Wakarusa, our country faced turmoil and division, and by 1861, we had entered the Great Civil War. A large percentage of men between the ages of 18 and 45 answered the immediate call to battle. The townspeople had no way of knowing that the war would last four grueling years and exact such a costly toll in human life. With the war's end and the assassination of President Abraham Lincoln, our nation began the arduous task of reconciliation. By that time, the Eel River Christian Conference had grown, and there were enough believers to establish a new church. So in December of 1867, Elders Peter Weinbrenner and George Abbott led a meeting of 14 charter members to form the first Christian church of Wakarusa. For almost two years, they met in various homes, but in 1869, the congregation purchased property on Waterford Street for $75 and built the first brick church in Olive Township. This building was a one-room structure of simple means. There was no vestibule at the entrance, no raised platform for the pulpit, and two aisles separated a wide center section of seats from two narrow side sections. By 1904, the congregation had outgrown this small building and decided to tear it down to make way for a larger one. The demolition crew met on July 4th after the morning service. One witness noted, they had strong ropes fastened to the walls and a long line of men, women, and children had a hold of the ropes and pulled with all their might. The bricks were then cleaned up by the men and women alike 
and used in the walls of the new church. The construction process lasted six months, and on January 1st, 1905, the new building was complete. This cement block building, with its bell tower and stained glass windows, proved to be a great blessing to the congregation. But Tuesday, June 23, 1936, brought about an unexpected change. At 2 a.m., the first Christian church building was fully engulfed in flame. A Wakarusa resident living just west of the church noticed the fire and called for help. Firefighters battled the blaze for the remainder of the night, but to no avail. The church was a complete loss except for the pulpit, choir chairs, and platform chairs, which had been removed from the building for a youth activity prior to the day of the fire. Less than three months after the destruction of the building, Pastor John Hartman resigned. The first Christian church was now without a building and without a pastor. Our country was in the midst of the Great Depression, and one-fourth of all wage-earning workers were unemployed. Life was hard, and money was tight. The congregation faced a long and difficult road in order to rebuild. Thankfully, the residents and store owners of Wakarusa rallied behind First Christian Church and provided physical and financial help. By 1937, a new and improved building was completed, and Gordon Kemble became pastor soon thereafter. The congregation was again ready to move forward in their service for Christ. The building constructed in 1937 is the same one that we use for worship today. Since then, however, the church has completed several additions to accommodate the growing congregation as well as new programs and ministries. However, not all changes involve the buildings. In 1945, after 78 years in the Eel River Christian Conference, the Congregation of First Christian Church voted to become an independent, fundamental Bible church. From that time forward, the church would be a self-governing body of believers. Another milestone in our history occurred in 1970. After 100 years of being identified as First Christian Church, the congregation decided to change the name in order to align themselves with like-minded mission and ministry organizations. They considered several names, but ultimately settled on the name Bible Baptist Church. By 1937, our vision for outreach had grown beyond Wakarusa and the surrounding communities. Tex and Alice Warnken became our first supporting missionaries, ministering in French Equatorial Africa. In the years to follow, we took on more missionaries for support. Then the Lord began to burden those in our own congregation to step out in missions. One of these was Joy Stiver, who was born right here in Wakarusa and grew up at First Christian Church. In 1950, 23-year-old Joy went into full-time Christian service and moved to North Carolina to work with Children's Bible Mission. She became our first homegrown missionary. 67 years later, Joy is retired and still lives in North Carolina. We continue to support her with prayer and financial assistance. Currently, we support 42 missionaries in numerous ministries around the world. Though we have taken on over half of these missionaries in the last 25 years, we have been partnered with many others for several decades.
The Lord has blessed our church with many faithful and able pastors over the last 150 years. These servants represent sacrifice, hard work, and dedication to the cause of Christ. But let's not forget the heart of this church, the people, those who give their time, their money, and their prayers to uphold this ministry. So here we are in 2017, worshiping God just like our forefathers did back in 1867. We are singing, praying, and being challenged from God's Word. Bible Baptist Church, 150 years, two names, 39 pastors, three buildings, and one fire. But we are more than numbers. We are God's people. We are serving Him, relying on Him, loving Him, and thanking Him for His provision and faithfulness to this church for 150 years. And we're striving to perpetuate our godly heritage for generations to come. Because our God is faithful. To God be the glory great things he hath done.